We're recording. Perfect. Hello. It is Monday, November 11th. Thank goodness for that little extension in your top bar that'll tell you what day it is, because otherwise this would always be a much longer process. Um, and this is the IPFS Weekly Call. And we have a couple of agenda items, starting with announcements first, that we're not going to be having this meeting next week. Um, I think we're tentatively going to be having it the week after uh, with the lovely Eric Ronnie. I will not, I will not be here, um, but Eric Ronnie will be uh, taking over as um, meeting host for the rest of the year. And um, another quick update is that we've just about finished our OKR scoring across all of the, the different working groups. So if you wanna get a little view into what some of the core working groups are working on and how, how they're all trending, check out the linked OKRs. They look snazzy and impressively, everyone is really, really, really on track to get all the stuff done that we wanted to get done. So things may shift. I think we will notice that uh, weeks just magically disappear on us with things like holidays and uh, an earlier end of this quarter. It's a short quarter, but um, some really excited stuff happening. So check it out. Um, Going back to the notes. Cool. The other thing that I wanted to share with folks was all of the exciting stuff happening around 2020 theme proposals. Um, so let me just share my screen so that people can see things. Hopefully this works. Cool. So um, I think I shared this a couple of weeks ago that we kicked off our 2020 project planning um, and with a call for theme proposals. And we got, I think, at least 10 last week, which is super cool and super exciting. Um, the, the kind of roadmap for things, the timeline, um, is that we've, we've kind of closed our open call for theme proposals. And this week is our planning spike. So we're taking all of those amazing ideas, all of the, the other latent stuff within um, <clears throat> the working groups that we really would like to do and chewing on that for this week to try and come up with a, a rough draft of where we should be focused um, kind of by the beginning of next week so that we can shop it around amongst other stakeholders, other projects like lib and IPLD um, and, and the various working groups to, to understand like where we can be focused. So just to give people a little bit of a sense like, woo, lots of awesome theme proposals and for tons of different areas, which is really, really cool. Um, we have things around GitHub, privacy, mobile, um, hardware, uh, sharing and collaboration, which is kind of like the identity um, side of things, um, building better examples, which is totally valid, um, and also how to do like kind of the local offline social application side of things. So like these are all amazing. Huge, huge, huge thank you to, I, I can't click things anymore because I have a bar in place, to everyone who submitted a theme proposal. They're phenomenal. Um, there's like really good discussions going on in the comments as well. So like go check out comments. They're, they're great and, and participate. Kind of the conversation can totally continue here. Um, I think I'd encourage everyone like there's far more here than any single group or even any collection of groups can can take on and push forward in the next year. Um, so the, the aim with this is to figure out what is the most high value thing to do that we can focus on that's going to enable this project to move forward super fast, and then how we can empower even more people to pick up these threads, focus, dedicate their time to it, um, and, and help move the project forward in these areas. But phenomenal, thank you all so much for um, kind of helping get out these great ideas check these out. Like I am so inspired reading all of these things. It was the most fun weekend. Just like, you know, all of these amazing futures for the project. And I think all of them really resonate with the direction we're going to head and the sorts of things that are absolutely going to happen on the IPFS network. I think the question is just like how to arrange them in time such that we don't try and do all of them at once because that would just be a recipe for doing none of them successfully. So uh, really cool, cool stuff. Um, curious if anyone has any questions about timeline or next steps or, or anything like that. Cool. Awesome. Oh, that is my update. And it's going to be a fun one.
All right. Well, drop any questions into chat if you have more questions about that. Otherwise, I'll pass it off to Alan, who has a quick update. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Okay, so uh, just the exciting news that yes, IPFS 040 is on the way out the door. Um, it's, uh, I've released a RC today, um, so that means that you can install it now using npm, uh, uh, npmi IPFS at 0.40-rc.0, um, and it's got some cool things in it. It's got, um, it's got a, a repo migration tool. I mean, that's not so cool in itself, but uh, but it will enable us to do exciting things like move the version of the repo forwards to a new version uh, when we want to make changes to it in the future, which will be coming soon when we switch to uh, version 1 CIDs by default. So that is going to be super useful. Um, the second thing is that we've got um, base32 uh, encoded uh, peer IDs, and now uh, we're now able to use, use them in I IPNS. Uh, you're able to resolve them. Um, which is another step forwards for uh, CID v1 uh, by default as well. Um, so that's good. We've got a brand new, uh, got some brand new web UI updates in there, as well as uh, what's the last thing? Uh, the, there's a few new DAG API CLI um, commands that are now available that previously weren't available before. Uh, so that is a quick overview of 040. <laughs> Go awesome. and test it out. <laughs> I'm like 80% sure that Alan, you just did that all by memory, which is just like super impressive. So thank you and snaps for that. Very exciting. Sorry, I'm walking home, so I have to do everything by memory. Killing it. Hey, shows you a pro. Awesome, awesome. Cool. Any other cool, cool updates from around the farm? Eric, anything snazzy happening in Doxlandia? Ollie, any any exciting infra updates to share? Uh, for the last couple of weeks, we have been brewing uh, four new bootstrap nodes for IPFS. So they are now landed. They are running. If you're running Go IPFS, chances are your node will start to connect to them automatically because they've been in the bootstrap. The default bootstrap is config list for some time. Um, and now they exist. So you just got you just got onto the IPFS network even more, four more times, four x more on it. You bootstrapped four times harder than before. Uh, it's also a timely um, deployment of them um, going forwards. LibP2P will no longer accept um, peer identities that were generated with key lengths less than RSA keys less than 2,048 bits. And so these new identities meet that requirement, uh, whereas the older bootstrap nodes do not. So we have bootstrap nodes that meet the requirements of new version 3, 0.3 libp2p out in the wild. Cool. Given that we're going to share this meeting out more broadly, is there any call to people who are watching async if they're using old versions of libp2p that we should tell them to do certain things? If you are using an old version of libp2p or a very old version of goipfs or you, in fact if you ever generated a key length deliberately that was less than 2048 bits rsa then you need to think twice about that and maybe generate a new identity because they are no longer supported stop doing that check that oh steven he's unmuted he's coming in what uh, also, check your bootstrap list. So run IPFS uh, bootstrap. Um, double check that's the right command. Uh, yeah, to list the bootstrappers. If you see a bunch of bootstrappers at the top saying DNS adder bootstrap .io, you're good. If you don't, uh, you should go add those. Uh, I can actually, well, let's see. I could put that in the meeting right now by, can I do this? Yes, I can. Uh, one sec. Okay, you see these? Um, it should look something like this. If you don't see something like that in your bootstrap list, 
uh, then you have a problem and you should have these. Uh, I've dropped Thank a link to the I've dropped a link to an issue that we opened on GoPFS to assess the impact of that uh, key limit change. The notable part is that uh, Go IPFS has never generated keys that wouldn't meet this requirement by default. So you would have had to deliberately make a less strong key. Uh, but if you did that, Stephen? Well, no, uh, Go IPFS in 2015 used to do this for a very short period of time. Yeah. Wow. Uh, okay. Unless you're immensely old school and have never uh -huh. updated. Well, well, no, so if you generated your key in 2015 and you kept on using it all of the way, you'll have problems. Right. Um, uh, yeah. So basically, if you have a really old node, just double check the bootstrap list and double check to make sure your key is correct. I did, I did some spelunking in the um, Git history and I couldn't see a time when it was ever lower than 2048. Uh, it used to be... In Go, yeah. In Go Lipid Beer, IPFS. In uh, IPFS. Okay, because like, I, I know this was pre Lipid PI. Like, I'm pretty sure the original nodes used 1000. Like, I've seen a commit that says switch to 2048 bit keys. Yes, and that was down from 4096. Uh, I think there was one before that that actually. That's sorry. great. All right, we'll do this spelunking. Okay. We'll update the Sorry. issue with the issues in the notes. Thank you all. Important PSA. So glad that everyone's getting visibility. All right, Eric, what did you want to update us on? I wanted to apologize in advance because my dog just started barking the second I hovered over the mute button. He's got the sixth sense. Um, uh, DocsWise, uh, in, our, in our upcoming uh, gathering, we plan to set up a smattering of sessions for uh, sneak previews of the, uh, actually everyone would be able to sneak preview it, but more directed like question and answer type sessions for usability and whatnot, and just general reactions. Um, so the likes of, of y'all might, would be uh, great candidates for that. So hit me up. And uh, this is all in advance of, uh, of, you know, broader usability testing with the community and uh, the universe at large. Cool. So exciting docs, docs beta with new information architecture and other exciting updates, you know, headed towards the door, just needs to, to do some testing before, before the, the yeah, it's, it's finding it. There's a map. It's being drawn. There's a plan. Which door? We'll have that to figure that out. <laughs> Important. Exciting stuff. Alan, hand. Uh, on the, I'm sorry, on the previous point, on the bootstrappers, I just wanted to add something, if that's okay. Super quick. Um, if you were like me and wondering what a DNS adder means in a multi-adder for the bootstrappers, then um, you're in luck because um, I found as much information as I could and I sent a pull request to uh, multi-formats uh, slash multi-adder on GitHub um, to document what DNS adder does. Uh, so go and check that out because it's not just a DNS address. It uses text records uh, in DNS to, uh, it's kind of a, a, a level of indirection. Um, and so, yeah, if you're interested in that, then go and check it out. And there's more docs. So hooray. Thank you. That is awesome. Betty accepted. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Any other exciting things from around the block that people want to share or want to point out from the ecosystem? Ollie was telling me as we first joined that there is an exciting new group that's looking into uh, using IPFS in um, elderly care homes. Was that am I am I phrasing that yeah, properly? That, that was the yeah yeah. But basically, um, gathering data from IoT devices. Super cool. Awesome. And I have some cool chats with various various people who want to build exciting new stuff in the wider IPFS ecosystem. Um, so yeah. I, it sounds like it's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting end of quarter. Uh, lots lots of humans having launches. We have um, 0.5.0 for go IPFS on the docket. 
Um, Alan was just telling us about the JSI PFAS RC. Sounds like there's a couple of people who are um, kind of continuing to, to launch stuff on top of this. So keep, keep your ears peeled. Don't actually peel your ears. That would probably be very uncomfortable for everyone involved, but you know, you know what I mean. Cool. Well, if no snazzy new updates, then I encourage everyone to take the 10 minutes back and we won't see you next week, but Eric is going to be your host the week after, right, Eric? The, the Monday of Thanksgiving week. The Monday of Thanksgiving, it's, that's December. Is that December? No. Nope, not December quite. Was, someone will be a host. If it's not me, I'll figure that out. Okay. Yeah, we can also cancel that week because I know that a number of people in the U.S. are going to be on things like holidays and other things like that. Um, so if, if you are not going to be available, then we might as well like draw an early line through that one. Yep, I'll check that out immediately. Cool. Get this call. Check the sheet and keep an eye on the calendar, but definitely not next week. TBD the week after that, and then Eric will be your new host for the rest of the year. Cool. Rock and roll. Awesome. I don't, I don't know. How, is this rock and roll? No, that's, yeah. that's hang loose. That's hang or, loose? I don't know what that is. It's that's a, like be quiet. Quiet coyote. Everyone be quiet. I don't know. Call me. Call me maybe. <laughs> that's hang loose. So like, isn't that rock and roll? Got to put your thumb in. Thumb in. Oh, okay. But that's like, that's okay. We're going to. Double horns. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Have a, have a great rest of your day, everybody. It's nazi to see you all. See you all in one or two weeks.